What's going on? I hope you're having a great week so far. I decided to mix it up because I always say, hey everyone. So, hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, yeah, I've just been really enjoying um, this uh, audio version of Andy Stanley's book, The Irresistible. And uh, there's so many concepts in here uh, that I absolutely love and find fascinating and interesting. And basically, it kind of comes from the thought of, man, when Christianity first started, that moment of Jesus dying on the cross for the sins of the world, you've heard people talk about this in church before many times, it was such a significant time. It was such a significant time. It, it's 2,000 years later, we're still talking about this and learning and reading and teaching and all of these things. And, uh, and you think, you know, you, I've had thoughts before, why, why didn't Jesus come sooner, right? And you know there's the old covenant with ancient Israel that was a temporary band-aid for uh, the separation between God and humanity and sin being in there. And so that was the Old Covenant, which we talk about being the Old Testament. And the New Testament is the New Covenant. That's the, uh, the why Jesus came and did what he did. So now you don't have sin there holding, you know, separating and all of this. And Jesus gives us a new command. Brand new command. I mean, we know to love our love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And, and, and then there's love your neighbor as yourself and we've heard Jesus say this we've heard uh, even lawyers say this in the Bible um, when Jesus answers into the Good Samaritan passage we we read about loving your neighbor in fact in a lot of different places I'm going to share a couple with you right now I've got them on my computer mark 12 31 the second is this you shall love your neighbor as yourself there is no other commandment greater than these Matthew 7 uh, 12 so whatever you wish that others would do to you do also to them and i love that because it speaks to loving our neighbors um again uh matthew 22 36 to 40 teacher which is the greatest in the law this is when the lawyer asked and he says you shall love the lord god with all your heart soul mind and strength and this is the first and greatest commandment second is love your neighbor as yourself love your neighbor as yourself um you know matthew 19 19 honor your father and mother and you shall love your neighbor as yourself, right? Over and over again, and all throughout the New Testament, we read this uh, and read about this. Paul really seems to get it. The disciples, I think, took a little while understanding it. And what Andy does in his book is he really brings the cultural atmosphere to the room where you go, wow, I actually feel like I understand for the first time what it would have felt like in this situation when this was said to be Jewish and what that means. And and then that's why it explains some of the situations in the New Testament. And they're talking to Gentiles and trying to figure it out. And what do we do? Because they were so ingrained in the old covenant, old law. And we do this sometimes too many times i would say over the years we've seen it throughout church history where the church has failed dropped the ball many places you think of like you know the crusades or you think of the old saying when coin and coffer rings a soul in purgatory sings the whole idea is you give to the church and you're gonna go to heaven and that's your ticket and that's how the church got money way way back and some of these things that just got mixed with old covenant and new covenant and understanding what really Jesus came and did and what he's called us to do. And in our world today, I think we use a lot of um, a lot of spiritual words that maybe not everybody gets. Like uh, sometimes the word Christian, that means a whole bunch of things to many different people, right? Well, believers, okay, there's another, another pool of things that just flood my mind with uh, language on how we talk to other people. And I love how Andy puts it in his book. He talks about it being when this movement was happening, it's as if the disciples were walking around going, are you a follower of the way? Because this is a new way. Christ came and did a new way. It wasn't old covenant 2.0, right? This is just, no, it's, that's the whole point of when Jesus died and the curtain being torn in two, that old covenant's gone. There's a brand new thing that he has for you. So what does he have? For us in our world today and it's interesting uh, we sometimes get the verse wrong you reap what you sow we think 
ah, you give some money to this charity or this organization here and it's going to reap tenfold. Your bank account's going to increase. You're going to see the dollars go up. And I've always read that and, and heard people talk like that. And I go, I think we're, we're missing something with this. It's, it's not, you reap what you sow. You're going to give time and help somebody out here. Well, they're going to give you time and help you out. And we know this isn't always true. You know this if you've ever helped somebody out you know you're like oh yeah i didn't get that repaid you know and and sometimes we go down the negative side of it of you know you're holding a grudge and i've done this and i've tried to do this for this person and that person and nobody ever cares nobody calls me nobody helps us out this family member you know never gets in contact with us and we can live you know on that side and jesus says no listen i want you to live on this side i want you just to love your neighbor without any thought of reward without any expectation just love 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 over and over 77 times just keep doing it forgive them and he speaks of forgiveness and the value in that and forgiving your neighbor actually i have a passage open here matthew 6 14 says if you forgive jesus if you forgive those who sin against you your heavenly father will forgive you but if you refuse to forgive others your father will not forgive you of your sins that's a really heavy passage. You think about that for a moment and you think about the people in your life. Jesus has called us to love others. Well, I don't forgive them. How can I forgive them for this? He wants us to. He wants us to love other people no matter what they've done. The Jewish people struggled with this. They struggled with Samaritans. Anybody who was not of Jewish belief, who did not believe in the Old Covenant. And you read about all of those things in the Old Testament. You read about them struggling with it in the New Testament. We need to circumcise the uncircumcised. All these things because we need to be following the law. Which pieces do we take and not take? you got to be clean, not unclean. And they're, they're pulling from all these things. And Jesus wants to remove that veil. I believe he wants to remove it in us today. The way we see those neighbors who have hurt or offended us. He wants to remove that veil and say love them. Love them unconditionally. And so how do we love our neighbor unconditionally? Especially those that we have a hard time loving. I think we need to be there. I think we need to be present. I think we need to listen to what they have to say. Don't always have an answer. Don't always be the, it doesn't always have to be the Jesus answer. It doesn't always have to be the spiritual answer. You don't have to sit there with your Bible opened up trying to prove them wrong or anything. People don't want that. They just want honest true felt love i think if we could do that in our world today we will be at a very different place but it's got to be all of us working together moving forward so i want to encourage you today who do you need to show an extra measure of love to and would you do that would you pause the screen right now take out your phone send a text message maybe to that family member you haven't talked to in years pastor it's so awkward there's so much going on i know i know i know i know Think about it. Pray about it. How? Ask God, how can I show that love? How can I break that mold? Don't be so uptight. Oh, I said this and not this because of it. Just love your neighbor as yourself. Forgive others. And uh, I believe when we talk about God has something for you, he doesn't want something from you. This is the for. This is what will make a difference and change your life. All right, uh, before you go, let me pray with you, Father. I thank you, God, that your son Jesus came and died for us. Thank you that he brought something brand new. And I pray that this concept will sink into our hearts in such a way that we can show an amazing, incredible love to our neighbors like never before. In Jesus' name, amen.